Hey what's going on guys, Chris here with another in-depth guide for one of those Battlefield 1 weapons. And in this video, we're going to be taking a good look at the Type 38 Arasaka from the Turning Tides DLC. A Japanese service rifle that can be equipped on a scout loadout as a primary weapon. The Type 38 was basically an evolved version of the earlier Type 30 Arasaka, a bolt action rifle which was in service with the Imperial Japanese Army. It had a simplified bolt, making manufacture and disassembly of the gun a little bit easier, and it also featured a sliding bolt cover to protect the internal mechanism from dust, debris and the harsh Pacific environment. But despite being a relatively useful addition for keeping the weapon in better condition, quite a lot of soldiers tended to get rid of these covers because they rattled around and made lots of noise while the gun was being used, which could have given their position away to the enemy and probably would have just been a bit annoying. The Type 38 was chambered to use the 65 by 50 mm Arasaka cartridge, which wasn't quite as powerful as other rifle rounds used by other nations at the time. Though it did produce a smaller amount of recoil because of this, which definitely would have been a benefit to the average Japanese soldier at the time, with them generally having a smaller stature, as the average height of a Japanese troop would have only been about 5 foot 3. The less powerful charge might have made the gun easier to fire, Though with that said, the actual rifle itself was friggin' massive, spanning over 50 inches in length, making it the longest bolt action rifle in the war. And when you combine that with a 16 inch bayonet, well you had a weapon which really would have tested the strength and comfort of Japanese infantrymen, with the gun weighing in at a fairly hefty 4.25 kilograms, so it wouldn't have exactly been a very easy weapon to handle in comparison to a lot of the other rifles around at the time. The Arasaka Type 30 was made for the Japanese military to replace the older Murata rifles, but when those Type 30s saw some action during the Russo-Japanese War in the early 1900s, quite a lot of problems surfaced when the guns were put through combat. Although it was a pretty big improvement over the Murata rifle, the Type 30 had quite a lot of reliability and safety issues, which led to the development of an updated version in 1905, the Type 38 Arasaka. This redesigned rifle was manufactured by several different arsenals in the east and put into service the year later. It gained the reputation of being a strong, sturdy, accurate and reliable weapon even if it was a little bit awkward to wield due to its length and weight. Though a shorter carbine variant was created and adopted to use with the Imperial Japanese Army, but this would have mainly been issued to non-frontline troops like engineers and cavalry units. Along with Japan, the Type 38 rifle was also used by a fair few other nations too. Mexico used it from 1913, Russia purchased a large number of them during World War I, and Great Britain bought a bunch of Type 30 and 38 rifles to train with at the start of the Great War too. The gun was eventually updated even further in 1939 in the form of the Type 99, which used a more powerful 7.7mm cartridge, though the Type 38 was never really replaced and still continued seeing action throughout World War II in the hands of Japanese soldiers with almost 3.5 million units being produced up until about 1942, making it one of Arasaka's most common rifle models. So there's only one version of the Type 38 Arasaka rifle, which is the infantry variant, and you'll have to own the Turning Tides DLC if you want to unlock it. Just like with the other weapons, you'll also have to complete a couple of requirements, and this one probably isn't exactly the easiest gun to get hold of. As although the first task of getting 25 counter sniping kills is pretty straightforward, the second assignment requires you to perform 3 multi kills whilst using the scout class, which might be a bit tricky for the average player. Now there's a few different ways you can go about this, but the best way I found to get the multi kills was by hopping into a torpedo boat as a primary gunner whilst the scout class is selected, and basically just blast other boats out of the water, usually taking out a few players at the same time, counting as a multi kill. Do it a few times and you'll have this one in the bag. There we guess you could always just use a destroyer instead, or even just go frag happy in Fort Devo, whichever way best suits you. But anyway, let's talk about those damage stats first. The Type 38 Arasaka is yet another scout rifle which has its own unique sweet spot zone, giving it the ability to kill more effectively at those early mid ranges. So if you're a fairly aggressive scout player, then this will probably be music to your ears. The gun's going to dish out its minimum damage of 80 at those closer ranges up to 10 meters, but then it'll start to increase gradually up to 30 meters, reaching the start of the Arasaka sweet spot zone. Between 30 and 62.5 meters, the rifle's going to deal its maximum damage of 100 with a well placed shot to the chest, but straying beyond that 62.5 meter mark, the damage will start to decline down, 
back to its minimum value of 80 again at 102 meters. So despite firing that fairly mild 6.5mm round, the gun's still going to deal a decent amount of damage across the board, having the same maximum and minimum damage values as a lot of the other rifles. Though its sweet spot span isn't exactly massive, so targets are less likely to lie within it. Although the sweet spot zone starts 10 meters before the SMLE Mark III, it also begins 10 meters further than the Vesely rifle, so although it might be a really deadly weapon for attacking enemies head on and advancing towards objective points, it might not kill quite as consistently up close, making it more suitable for mid-range gunfights with a slight gap between you and your target. It's pretty similar to the Martini Henry's one-hit kill zone, which also starts at 30 meters too, though the Martini sweet spot spans 18 meters further. Plus, it also deals bonus damage between 42 and 68 meters, allowing it to generally kill more consistently over those mid-ranges by overriding those lower body and upper arm multipliers. Outside of the Arasaka's sweet spot zone, the rifle's going to kill in two bullets to any part of the body. And of course, if you plant one of your rounds into an enemy helmet, then that 1.8 times multiplier is going to be enough to take them out of the fight instantly at any range. So I definitely advise going for those headshots whenever you can. Although the Arasaka isn't the quickest firing bolt action rifle in the game, it's definitely on the faster side when compared to most of the others. According to Simfic, the gun fires at 57 RPM, which is a little bit higher than average, 5 RPM quicker than the SMLE Mark III, which probably isn't really going to be all that noticeable, but when you compare this to those other aggressive rifles which compete with the Arasaka within those close to medium ranges, it clearly fires a hell of a lot faster, with the Vettelli and Martini Henry being miles behind. Because it has a decent fire rate, this generally gives the gun fairly quick kill times over all distances, even outside of that sweet spot zone, as the gun's still going to kill in a maximum of two bullets, just like most of the others. So although the Type 38 is going to be most effective at medium range, it's still capable of performing quite well against targets further away too, making it a very versatile rifle to pick to cater for a wide range of combat scenarios. Not only is the fire rate higher than those other close to mid-range rifles, but so is the gun's muzzle velocity, which is another factor which improves the Arasaka's effectiveness at longer ranges, and so makes it even more adaptable to different situations. Bullets are going to travel through the air at the speed of 770 meters per second, so slightly faster than the Lee Enfield's rounds, which might make the Type 38 seem a tad easier to use beyond medium range, even though it has an earlier sweet spot zone. The muzzle velocity feels pretty good for an infantry rifle, as you'll only need to lead a moving target at a distance by a tiny bit. And unlike most of the other scout weapons apart from the M1903, the Arasaka's bullets have a slightly lower amount of drag, meaning they're not going to slow down quite as much at longer ranges as they travel through the air. It's only a marginal difference, but it just might improve the bullet's trajectory, and sometimes make it seem more reliable to use against targets further away, even though it's not exactly designed to be a longer ranged weapon. The Type 38 Arasaka's accuracy isn't really all that different to the other scout weapons, which all generally have the same or at least very similar amounts of recoil and spread. The Type 38 jumps upwards with a vertical value of 2 and side to side with a value of 1, so unsurprisingly this is exactly the same as all of the other bolt action rifles. And when it comes to spread, the Arasaka's got an ADS base spread of 0 when not moving and 1 when you are, so basically it's going to function like all of the others apart from the carbine variants, which give you slightly more wiggle room having a lower ADS spread while strafing around. If you want to be accurate, you've got to stand still. It's just a simple fact of how rifles work in Battlefield 1, and the rules definitely don't change here. Though one thing to mention about the Type 38 is that being an infantry variant, this means that it's also got the same spread decrease benefits that the other infantry variants have too, being able to recover twice as fast from spread per second when you stop firing. This might allow you to be more accurate when landing that second killing blow on an already weakened enemy player, and although it unfortunately doesn't have the same recoil decrease benefits as the other infantry variants, which would have made it feel a bit easier to line up that second shot by having the sights reset a tiny bit faster, at least the quicker recovery from spread should make it seem more precise, reducing the chances of your bullet straying off target due to random bullet deviation, thus helping to increase the weapon's accuracy slightly over a lot of the other non-infantry rifles.
Now, just like the good majority of the other bolt action rifles on offer for the Scout class, the Type 38 Arasaka can hold a standard 5 rounds within its internal magazine. Unlike the SMLE Mark III, which probably has the most in common with it, holding a total of 10, so 5 shots more. It might not seem like much, but it's still got one more bullet than the Vetterli and four more than the Martini Henry, which can practically only hold one round at any time. And with these guns also being best used for offensive sniping closer to the front lines, the Arasaka is going to have a bit of an edge over them both, giving you one more shot to bring down an enemy within that sweet spot zone or finish off a weakened player low on health. In a similar way to the Mosin Nagant, the Type 38 has a dynamic reload, which basically means it reloads at different speeds depending on however many bullets are left over in the gun. The reload times are all pretty average, and there's nothing exactly massively different when you compare it to the other rifles, with tactical reloads taking about 3 to 4.4 seconds and full ones taking 3.9, which is very similar to the others, give or take a few milliseconds. But just like the Mosin, if you reload with just one round left over in the weapon, you can cut down the Arasaka's reload time by ejecting that remaining cartridge and slotting in a brand new stripper clip, instead of shoving 5 bullets back to the magazine individually. So it's definitely best to keep this in mind to give yourself a tactical advantage up on the front lines. And if you're not in a vulnerable position with a single round left over, it's often best to reload, as it'll be exactly the same speed as a full reload anyway, giving you more ammo, first preparing you for a shitstorm that just might be around the next corner. So anyway, in conclusion, the Type 38 Arasaka is a weapon made for aggressive players who don't want to sacrifice too much long-ranged effectiveness at the same time. It plays a bit like a less consistent but more reliable Martini Henry, with a lot of similar factors to the SMLE, being most useful for early mid-range gunfights just behind the front lines. Unfortunately, the Type 38's got one of the smallest sweet spot zones in the whole game, meaning enemies are less likely to lie within that one hit kill area, plus it's not going to deal any extra damage to override those body part multipliers like the Martini Henry does. You're also not going to be able to be quite as aggressive as you would with maybe the Vetterli rifle, which has its sweet spot zone set a little bit nearer, allowing you to get closer to the action and be more effective. But the Arasaka can perform better over distance, having a quicker muzzle velocity, less drag and slightly higher range damage, making it a much more versatile weapon for dealing with enemies over a wider scale. And when you combine these elements with the fact that the gun fires a bit faster than most of the other scout rifles in the game, let alone the Vetterli and Martini Henry, which are both pretty sluggish in comparison, then you've got yourself a fairly well-rounded package, granting you decent kill times over most distances. It's not exactly the best long-range weapon for sniping targets in the distance, with the lack of optical attachments and with it having a mid-range sweet spot zone, but it still definitely shouldn't be underestimated, especially if you've got a steady aim and can line up those lethal headshots. The gun doesn't really have any special qualities when it comes to ammo capacity or reload speeds, though it can reload a bit quicker if you've got a round left over in that internal magazine, something which quite a lot of the other scout rifles just simply can't do. Overall, the Type 38 is one of the most well-rounded, flexible scout weapons in the whole game, as although it's mainly designed for mid-range fights, it's still a strong choice to pick to deal with a variety of different situations outside of that sweet spot zone. And so long as you can line up those shots and can judge that muzzle velocity, the Arasaka could do some serious damage towards the enemy team. So that's just about it for another one guys, hope you enjoyed the guide. Hit that like button if you did, and subscribe for tons more videos coming soon. Take it easy, and I'll see you in our next episode.